back to my channel. So today I am doing my second annual Everything I Made in 2021 video. And I have a lot of items this year. I think I have upwards of 30. So it was a very busy and productive year and I'm excited to finally try all this on again because it's been so long since I put on some of these dresses and stuff. And sorry if my voice sounds a little funny, I'm recovering from a little cold and Sophie says hi. So hopefully it's not too bad. And I do actually have a tutorial for almost every single one of the items up here this year. So if you see something up here you really, really like, there is a very good chance that I have a tutorial on it somewhere on my channel. So let's get into it. Oh, also it's in rainbow order because I feel like it's just more satisfying than like chronological order. So that's what I'm going by. So let's start off with the pink category because I actually don't have any red items this year. I thought I would start off with this dress because this is probably the dress that I've made that I've worn the most this year. I wear this dress all the freaking time. Um, and it's also one that a lot of you guys made this year and it made me so happy seeing like all your recreations of it because they all turned out so freaking pretty. And it has a lace-up bag and it's super easy to get on and off and it's actually really, really easy to make too because there's no zipper or anything. So the back makes it really adjustable for other sizes. And even for the winter time, I've been like layering sweaters on top of it and stuff just because I love it so much. And yeah, I love all the dresses I made this year, but this is the one I definitely got the most wear out of. The next dress is my Reformation inspired dress from a bed sheet. And as much as I love it, I honestly don't wear it enough. There were like a bunch of techniques on it that I've been wanting to try for a really long time that I was super happy to do on this dress, like the bubble sleeves and also all the buttons down the front. And it makes for a super dainty and cottagecore dress, so I don't know why I haven't worn it more. And I just love using sheets as fabric because it gives you so much more fabric to work from than buying fabric by the yard. And it's also a lot cheaper, so I did use this fabric again in another one of my projects. This skirt was actually a thrift flip that I did this year and it used to be a pair of pants. And I am pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. One of my big goals from this year was trying to buy a lot less fast fashion and like reusing more things. So I was super in love with how this one turned out and I'm honestly probably going to be doing this to like all of my old pants at this point. <laughs> this dress is definitely one of my favorite things that I made this year. I feel like an absolute princess when I wear it and it just fits me so nicely. Um, and the sleeves can also be worn like off the shoulder. It just has like the daintiest little silhouette and also the ruffles on the bottom are just stunning. Um, and this dress is one of my Selkie inspired ones, one of many, because Selkie totally blew up this year and everybody was so obsessed with the designs. So, you know, I had to make a few of my own. And like I said, it is just so insanely fun to wear. And I was insanely into the whole corset top trend this year with a little bit of boning in the front to give it some structure. And then I did the hook and eyes in the back. And this fabric I actually had left over from a project that I made last year. So I was super happy that I had just enough to finish this top because I am so in love with how it turned out. And it's super fun to wear with like pants or skirts and it's super versatile. So this is definitely one of my top makes this year. And I loved it so much that I actually made three others. And this one again was made from another scrap fabric. And it's obviously the strawberry dress material that I made last year. And this one I actually added bow straps to instead of doing the all across. So I had a lot of fun making these corset tops because there's so many different alterations that you can do to them. This dress is a remake of one that I saw all over Instagram this year and I was absolutely in love with it so I was so happy when I found like the perfect fabric for it. And honestly with the pink hair and everything I feel like strawberry shortcake <laughs> and I kind of love it. Like I mentioned here is that same reformation inspired dress fabric but in a skirt form. And this is actually the same midi skirt pattern that I made last year out of the orange fabric. But I felt like this one was a much more like cottagecore version, which you know I love. This next dress is actually the last one in my homecoming mini series. Um, and this was the advanced one. And I really, really love how it turned out. I feel like an absolute fairy in it. And this design is one I have been wanting to do for a very long time. So I was super happy to finally check that one off the list. And I love this off the shoulder moment. And it also has a lace up back. And like I said, it just has absolute fairy vibes. I'm really excited to show you guys this next creation because it's really cold in my room and this is a sweatshirt. So now I'm really happy. So this is a sweatshirt that I actually painted this year. Um, and this is another project I had planned out for a really long time, so I was super happy to finally get around to it. And you guys know I love Studio Ghibli, so this one is of Kiki's Delivery Service. And I've been wearing this sweatshirt like non-stop since it got cold, because it's really, really warm and cozy. <laughs> I think this dress is kind of the bridge between the pink category and the orange category, so we're finally making progress. And this dress was the first one of my homecoming dress series. 
So this was the beginner tutorial and honestly I was not expecting to like this dress as much as I do but I used this absolutely stunning brocade fabric and it just made these puffy box pleats that I absolutely fell in love with and also this dress has pockets so it's a big win. <laughs> Alright I'm gonna need a minute here to put on the next dress. <laughs> this poor hanger is really going through it. Alright I am quite honestly impressed I was able to get into this dress by myself because it is just so much. I think there were almost 100 yards used in this project, and this one is obviously a recreation of Billie Eilish's Met Gala dress from this year, and this dress was honestly such an experience. I didn't even like put on the hoop skirt and petticoat that go with it because I don't know that it would really fit in my room. So this is what we're getting today, and it of course also has the giant train that's behind me that you can't see. And I have not put on this dress since I filmed it. It's just been sitting on the floor of my closet because I honestly don't know what to do with it anymore. But it honestly turned out better than I imagined. I think it's really, really close to the original and it fits me super, super well. But the bodice does have to be very tight to hold this all up. <laughs> all right, well, this is the second version of the puff dress that I made this year. Um, and this is the shorter version. And I ended up making this dress because I ordered this fabric for my prom dress series and it was way more orange than I intended it to be and I was just not into it at the time so I put it aside for a different project and it ended up just being the perfect amount of fabric for another puff dress so I just made another one <laughs> well this is yet another corset top and this one I actually made after I released the pattern because I was really excited about it um, and instead of doing the same hook and eye in the back I did a lace up this time this is a top that I made and somehow the only yellow thing that I made this year but I think this was actually the first thing that I made at the very beginning of the year um, and I think it's really cute I did a whole bunch of piping on this with this silk fabric these shorts I made as part of my Halloween costume this year and me and my brother went as Wirt and Greg and my little brother was Jason Thunderbird at the Frog from Over the Garden Wall and uh, yeah I just feel like a little lad when I wear these it's pretty much all I have to say about them <laughs> Alright, so for this one, this top I made and also I threw on this hat with it because I didn't want to do like the hat by itself because I just feel like this makes more sense. This top was a really easy one that I made, but I think it's a really cute design. Um, and then this hat is also reversible, so I think it's really cute both ways. Um, and also on the green side, I didn't include it on the tutorial, but I made little frog eyes and I turned it into a frog hat. So I really love both of these pieces a lot. These I think were the first pants that I made this year. Um, and they're out of this really cute green gingham fabric and I think they're super super fun and they're really really soft and I will admit that they do look a little nicer when they're ironed but I was lazy today but I still think they're really really cute and I've been wanting some more like gingham pants and like just fun and colorful pants so I thought these were really fun to add to the collection this dress is another one of my favorites from this year I am super in love with this design because it's a super dainty aesthetic but it's also like casual enough you can wear it every day but like special enough to be like interesting you know oh yeah and this one also has pockets too and this dress is another one of those that is just like surprisingly easy to make and it's also really easy to make different sizes because of how the back is done with the bow and also the stretchy adjustable waist this dress was the first one of my prom dress series this year and this is the beginner friendly dress and this is another one of those that is insanely easy to make, but I think it is just so elegant and stunning, and the back is again another showstopper. And it also has pockets! And a lot of you guys made this one for your prom this year, I loved seeing all the recreations, and you guys did such amazing jobs, it just made me so happy. This was my last make of the year, and this is a remake of the dress that Anya Taylor-Joy wore to the Golden Globes this year. Um, and somebody suggested this a long time ago, but I finally got around to it, and it was such a fun project. I'm kind of in love with this whole cape moment. I never made a dress this fitted, but I was actually really into it. And this dress is so sparkly that I have legit had sparkles all over my house for the past month. Like, I just find them in completely random spots. Like, it's bad, but I think it was worth it. You guys know I am a huge overall fan, so I was really in love with this pair that I made. They're a super classic blue denim pair, um, and it was also my first time doing the really classic overall clasps on the top, and they were actually a lot easier than I was expecting them to be, and the fit on these just fit me perfectly. This dress was the last one in my prom dress series from this year, and it took me so freaking long to finish because of all the appliques on it, but I think that the effect turned out really, really beautifully, and I'm honestly really happy with the finished product. I always like those kind of like corset the details on these kinds of dresses um, and also the slit is really pretty to me not gonna lie when I first finished this dress I was honestly kind of disappointed because it didn't turn out the exact way that I envisioned 
But once I kind of got over that, I actually really fell in love with it. Um, and this was my overall dress, and it was meant to like not really be overalls, um, but the tension didn't really totally work out right on the sides, so this is what it is now. But I actually really, really love it, and I've been wearing it a lot too. Um, and this dress is also kind of the one that made me start liking longer dresses on me because before I would only ever wear short dresses. But I've actually been super into this like kind of style this year. This here is the second dress in my homecoming dress series. Um, and this was like the intermediate level. And I think it's a really elegant design. And um, the fabric I used also had this really cute trim on it that I was able to use around the neckline and also for the bottom hem. This top was another thrift flip that I did this year. Um, and this top actually used to be a really long skirt that I got from a friend. And this fabric has like the prettiest shimmer to it. And I think that this top is just really elegant and I really need to wear it more because I feel really, really cool when I wear it. Um, and then also it has a little tie in the back. Because if you guys haven't realized yet, I really like having open backs. <laughs> well, most of you guys probably know this dress because this dress was my most viewed video of the year. And like she deserves to be the most viewed video. Like she is gorgeous. I absolutely love this dress. And this was the second dress out of my prom dress series, and it was honestly surprisingly easy to make. I wasn't sure how I was going to go about this design. And this fabric is another one that used to be a bed sheet. And this dress also has pockets, because you guys know I love pockets. <laughs> oh, and also, I think that there's going to be a pattern of this dress pretty soon on my website, so keep an eye out. <laughs> and we are finally on to the purple category. And this dress was a recreation of one that was all over Pinterest this year. I honestly don't even remember what the brand was, but like every Instagram girl was wearing it. And I made mine out of this really pretty purple rayon fabric that I had saved for a while in my fabric box, so I was really happy to put to good use. This top is a fairly simple one that I made this year um, and I saw this one going around for a while too um, and I honestly thought I was going to wear it a lot more than I have. I think maybe the cut isn't my favorite on me but I still think that overall it's a really cute design and I do actually think that it's pretty cute now that I'm trying it back on again so maybe I'll try to wear it more this year. <laughs> I honestly wasn't totally sure if this dress should go in the pink category or the purple category but because the pink one is so big I decided to put it with the purples and this is another beginner friendly dress um, and I usually don't like empire waist so I was trying something a bit new with this one and I actually have been wearing this one a lot too and it's just another one of those that's like really simple but the payoff is really really good <laughs> this dress is my little black dress that I made for the holidays um, and I usually don't do this style of dress where it's just one panel all the way down and I also don't usually work with black as you can probably tell but I was super super happy with how this dress turned out uh, and I bought this polka dot fabric a long time ago for the sleeves so I was super happy to put it to good use. I swear this is the last corset top I'm showing you guys today. And I paired them with these white pants that I actually made this year too, so you can kind of see it a bit better. Um, and this corset top actually has a zipper in the back. Um, and then these jeans that I made, these are probably the best pair of pants I've ever made. I was super, super proud of like the construction of them because usually I kind of cut things really big and then like adjust it to fit me as I go but this one I just trusted my gut and like really went for it and they actually fit me perfectly and also the best part of making your own jeans is you can make the pockets super super big <laughs> this piece definitely wins the award for the weirdest thing I made this year and also probably the most time consuming this is a recreation of the look that Grimes wore to the Met Gala this year um, and it is absolutely insane, but I kind of love it. I dyed these pieces myself to get this nice ombre, and then I also hand cut every single one of these pieces on the bodice here and glued it on. But like, honestly, I'm pretty proud of it. But like, I really have to like start thinking about like some of the things I make before I make them because I don't, I don't know why I decided this was a good idea. Next up, we have this skirt that I made this year, and this was a recreation of the Orson Iris ballerina skirt that was going all over the internet. And honestly, when I first started looking at it, I was really, really confused about what was going on here. But once I kind of got an understanding of it, it was so easy to make. Like, I was absolutely shocked. It is so stinking cute though, and like the twirl factor is amazing. <laughs> this dress actually used to be a curtain that I got from Ikea, but now it is this absolutely adorable sundress. I feel like a swan or something when I wear this. Like, it just has the cutest ruffles at the bottom. 
Um, and it also has this like totally ruffled top. And then in the back, it has these little tie straps. It is like the best way to live out those little cottagecore dreams. All right, we are on to the second to last design. And this is a bustier top that I made. And honestly, this is another one that I love so much that I just don't get around to wearing. I think it's so pretty though. And I'm a huge fan of the lace up in the front. And to finish this off, I am of course ending with my first silky inspired puff dress. And this video was kind of the one that was like the first one to do really, really well this year. Um, and this dress was also the first one that I started selling patterns for and I love it so much It's so gorgeous and it's of course another one that a bunch of you guys have made this year And honestly this dress is just really special this year And I feel like it's just the best way to wrap up this video So that is officially everything that I made this year I made probably the most things I've ever made in one year But I had so much fun and I feel like my sewing skills definitely improved a lot and it was just a really, really fun year, and I cannot wait to see everything that I make in 2022. So I hope that you guys will stick around for it, and I will see you next week for another video. Bye!